How's everybody today? Good. Um, you know, we've had a pretty good week this week. Uh, players seem to be working hard and uh, responding to the things that we need to do to try to improve as a team. Uh, the thing we've been trying to emphasize to them is, um, you know, anything you do, the way you do anything is like the way you do everything, all right, because it's a part of who you are uh, in terms of uh, you got chan a chance to accomplish something special. This is probably the game that will define us more than any other game we played this year. And, you know, if you're going to accomplish something in that, everybody in my whole life has been looking for an easier way to do something. Um, you know, you used to, I used to have to go out when I was a kid and not only get up and turn the channel on the TV, but we only got three channels. And I had to go out in the backyard in the dark, scared to death, and turn the antenna for my dad so we could change channels to get the next channel. Now, you don't even get out of the chair. All right, and we got 500 channels, not three channels. All right, so all my life, somebody's been looking for an easier way to do everything. But to do this, there's no easy way to do it. It takes a lot of hard work. It's very challenging. Uh, and everybody has got to challenge themselves to be their best to be able to do it. So, um, you know, but it, this will be the game to me that defines us more than any game we've played this year in terms of the challenges that we have. Uh, it's a great opportunity for our team. Uh, they've got a very good team and uh, be a very difficult place for us to play. And it will take a lot of poise on our part to be able to compete the way we need to compete every play in the game to to do the things we need to do to have success. Uh, Julio did practice today. Uh, didn't seem to have a lot of issues. Um, so, um, you know, we'll, like always, you always got to see, you know, how he responds to that in terms of, you know, what happens next. Um, and if he gets better tomorrow, I think he'll be fine. Uh, Chris Jordan did some practicing today, uh, probably a little bit more limited. Um, and we'll just have to evaluate him, you know, day to day. So. Coach, can you comment on the performance of Robert Lester this year and how much he's improved since last year? Uh, Robert has done a really good job for us this year. Uh, he's a young player. He got to play some last year as a backup. Um, but I think has sort of, you, you know, taken the responsibility of being a starter and um, really has taken a lot of pride in his performance and trying to do things correctly. Uh, Robert's a really quiet guy. Uh, so for him to communicate has been something that we've really tried to emphasize with him because we have to play with that togetherness and communication to eliminate mistakes in the secondary. And I think Mark Barron has set, set a very good example for him. And Robert has responded. He's got good ball skills. Uh, you know, he played corner in high school. and. Uh, those kind of guys usually make pretty good safeties. He's got good size, and uh, he's gotten better every game this year uh, and certainly has uh, become a consistent performer for us, and we're pleased with his progress. Coach, can you speak on uh, Greg McElroy, uh, one of the leaders on offense? He doesn't seem to get rattled uh, when he goes through tough stretches of the game. Can you speak how important it is to other players on his composure and everything during the games? Well, I, I think that when you're – the leader. Uh, I think everybody expects you to sort of set the example of how you're going to respond to every situation that comes up in the game. And I think Greg, one of the great parts of his personality is, you know, he's a very bright guy. Uh, he doesn't overanalyze things. Uh, he always can play the next play. Uh, I think this year he's learned how to do that even better than a year ago in terms of uh, shaking off a bad play or whatever. Um, but he's actually so poised and so good. You know, he got hurt really in the second quarter and nobody knew it. He got hit in the head when he scrambled once and got hit over on the sidelines. And, um, you know, it really affected him, you know, in the game, I think. And we didn't know it until the fourth quarter when he called a play wrong and a formation wrong and uh, then tried to run the play that we signaled. So I said, something's not right here. Um, now, but anyway, uh, and he said he was fine. He says, I've been shaken up before and been able to play through it. So, you know, you're talking about a special guy who has special personality, very smart, like having a coach on the field, and really affects all the other guys in a very positive way because he does have a lot of poise. And I think all the other players have a lot of confidence in him. Coach, you said this game would uh, 
define you, be the, the game that would define you the most? Why, Coach? Well, because I think it's the biggest game we've played to this point against a very good team, you know, in a tough circumstance on the road. Um, we didn't play very well on the road at Arkansas to start the game. And uh, I think if we have shown maturity as a team, it's going to be important that we can start fast and finish strong and play through 60 minutes of whatever happens and be able to overcome whatever adversity occurs, you know, in this game. Um, and I just, that's just the way I feel. Coach Saban is probably a simplistic way to look at it to say that Drake or Patrick will have to shut down Alshon Jeffrey in this in this game. What actually has to happen for you to kind of contain him uh, as South Carolina's top receiver? Well, I think you know the guy has got great size and uh, has been very productive, and they use him very well in his you know in their offense. Um, and I don't, I don't think it's just going to be Dre Kirkpatrick. It'll be, you know, whoever's playing against them will have to do a really good job against them. And I think the big thing is, is, you know, how do you play the vertical passes? You know, I think the guy's going to catch some passes in the game. But um, when they try to throw him the ball down the field uh, for big plays, which he's very good at, they're very good at, especially in the red zone. And they must have tried five at least on us last year in the red zone to him. Um, we have to be able to play the ball, make those plays. And I think eliminating the big play with him is probably the most critical thing that uh, our corners need to do you know, in this game. Uh, two things, please. Uh, if, if Julio is able to play this week, do you keep using him in special teams in, in all of his roles? And secondly, uh, last year there was kind of a feeling that the defense was kind of Rolando's. I mean, even though there were leaders at each spot, you know, each tier. Is there one guy that is kind of emerging as a leader on the defense so far? Uh, you know, I think we have several guys that have shown leadership uh, on defense. And I think it's, um, you know, Mark has done a really good job in the secondary. Dante does a good job with the linebackers. Uh, I think we have some other guys. Um, you know, Marcel has tried to do a good job. Luther Davis has tried to do a good job. Um, you know, I think all those guys really care about how the team does. and. I have been trying to be supportive of other players so that they can develop and do the things they need to do to play winning football. But um, you know, I can't say that one specific guy has become sort of the the alpha dog personality of the group. Um, you know, Roe was a special guy that way, and even though we had other guys on our team that had leadership capabilities, I do think that uh, they all responded to him, and I think everybody on our team responds to Dante. Uh, but I think there's other players who provide leadership as well. I know the scene in Columbia is going to be similar to the scene in Fayetteville a couple weeks ago. Just, um, I guess, when the number one team comes to town and just a chance to make your season with one big win, it's like their Super Bowl, basically. Just basically what your thoughts were about what you learned from um, a head coaching perspective about how to psychologically prepare your team for that type of mindset from the from the opponent when this is there. Well, I, I, I think the first thing you know the team's got to be convinced of is it's about what they do. I'm talking about what we do. You know that none of those things have any f effect on the game uh, unless they affect you. And I think um, everybody here has probably heard the analogy that I used when I was at Michigan State and we would go to Notre Dame and. There were all these reasons why you could never beat Notre Dame. You know, if they wore green jerseys, you couldn't beat them. And if the Gipper talked to them Friday night before the game, you know, you had no chance to win. And I said, guys, you're going to hear all this stuff, but it means nothing unless it means something to you. All right, so when we go play on the road in this league, you know, none of that stuff that you're talking about means anything unless you let it affect you and it means something to you. If you can stay focused on your job and believe and trust in the fact that what you do will affect the outcome of the game. It will be about what you do. And it won't be about any of that stuff when it's all over. When we come back here and watch the film, you know, on Monday, we'll sit here and say we made these mistakes and that, that was, that, that when we did it correctly, good things happened and we didn't. Bad things happen and if you don't do it correctly and enough bad things happen, you don't give yourself an opportunity to be successful. So um, I think that's the way we've always approached it. Uh, the field's going to be, I think, 100 yard, 53 yards wide and 100 yards deep, I think. I don't think they're going to change that. So it'll be the same size field for everyone. And 
you know, you got to be able to play and overcome those kind of circumstances if you're going to uh, have a chance to to win in this league. You got to do it on the road. Coach, just two questions for me. First off, could you talk more about what what happened to Greg in that game? You said you know he wasn't he didn't call the right play. I think is what you said. And then the other yeah, that was later in the game and. Um, you, you, you know, so he had he'd gotten dinged a little bit and didn't let anybody know it, and it didn't affect him. I mean, he did play, you know, well in the game, but um, I was just using that as something that you know a lot of guys would would have struggled to be able to continue to function, um, you know, if they got hit that way. And you know, with him, he just overcomes just about anything that comes his way. So um, it's no big deal. Okay, and then the other question, I know you have a lot of respect for Steve Spurrier. He has a, a tendency to switch quarterbacks since, <laughs> since he had Danny Werfel, it seems like. Just what are your thoughts on, on the rotating quarterback system, regardless of who, who's doing it? Well, I, I think that every coach needs to make the decision about what they're comfortable with. And, you know, Steve's had a tremendous amount of success, probably as much success in this league as anybody that coaches in this league, and probably pretty close to anybody that's ever coached in the league. And, um, you know, he's a quarterback coach. Um, he probably knows how to handle his guys extremely well. Uh, they all seem to play pretty well and, um, you know, do a really good job for him. So, you know, it's what it, what works for him. And that, that's, that's his decision and that's his choice. Um, I'm kind of a continuity guy, so, uh, you know, to keep continuity with the team and the leadership and all that. If you have a guy that's playing well, you know, you just like to see him continue to play well. But I think all the other players, when you do change guys, they get used to that too, so it doesn't affect them. And uh, I'm sure it doesn't affect their team. They've, they've played extremely well, regardless of who's been in there. But we have a lot of respect for Garcia and what he's done, and he's a very good quarterback in our opinion. Uh, Coach, I want to talk, talk or ask you to talk a little bit about yards after contact uh, and not just so much the yards, but how that plays into uh, relentless and dominating and how you go about getting that. Is it a, probably a combination, I guess, but recruiting, coaching, uh, the mindset, and, and, not, and I'm thinking mainly of Trent and Mark, but also Julio, say, or other players. All right. Well, those guys are obviously very good players and they're great competitors. And, you know, I certainly wouldn't take any of the credit for the yards after contact that they get. But uh, I think from a program standpoint, you're trying to develop, you know, a mental toughness and an attitude, you know, on your team that um, they are going to be relentless competitors. They are going to, you know, come after you every play. And, um, with a sort of an intensity that the other team really can't match. And, you know, that's the kind of attitude that we try to build on our team. I think sometimes we've been able to play that way and sometimes we haven't. And the more consistent we can be at getting that with our entire team, not just a few individual players, although they set a tremendous example for it, um, I think the better chance we'll have, we'll be able to have, to have success, give us a better chance to have success. All right, thank you.